How do neural networks work? How can we design, train and run them for any platform, even an Arduino? Eric, my little AI assistant is here to break it all down for you, step by step. Eric, the stage is yours. Okay. Like their counterparts in nature, neural networks are also made up of neurons. These are arranged in layers, where each neuron's output connects to the inputs of the next layer. Each of these connections has a weight, which represents its importance. These weights are then multiplied by the output value from the previous neurons and summed up. After that, a bias value is added. Finally, the result goes through an activation function, which decides what the neuron's final output should be. ReLU, Leaky ReLU, TanH, Sigmoid, and Softmax are some of the most commonly used activation functions. Each one has its own strengths and trade-offs, and picking the right one is a key step when designing a neural network. Is it really that simple? Can you show me an example? Sure. Here it is. Every neural network starts with an input layer. In this example, it has one neuron that passes the reading from an analog input pin to four neurons in the first hidden layer. Input neurons simply hold and forward the input values through weighted connections. The hidden layer neurons then process this data the same way as described earlier, by applying an activation function. In this case, they're using the TA and H function, which outputs values between negative 1 and 1. These then go to the output layer, which has three neurons using sigmoid activation each one representing a single output. These control three LEDs, so each LED lights up based on their value, which is between zero and one. Yeah, that makes sense. But how do we actually figure out the weights and biases? Do we just guess them, or is there a better way? Great question. We don't guess them manually. Instead, we train the network using a method called backpropagation. We can describe a neural network as a function that predicts output values from input values and its parameters, namely the weights and biases. So we use special functions, called loss functions, to evaluate how far the network's predictions are from the desired result. The goal is to make this difference as small as possible. As long as this isn't the case, the backpropagation algorithm adjusts the parameters to reduce the loss. This continues until the loss is nearly zero, and the parameters stabilize with minimal further changes. To achieve this, we feed example inputs and their correct outputs, the training data, into a Python script built on a training framework like TensorFlow or PyTorch. All right, here's the little magic program. First, I create the training data. X contains eight float numbers from zero to one, and Y holds their three-bit binary equivalents. Yep, we're basically teaching the network to convert an analog value into its binary form. Then I define a simple model with one hidden layer of four neurons using the TanH activation function and an output layer with three neurons using sigmoid activation. Training happens in a for loop. Each cycle is called an epoch. We run it over and over until the weights and biases start making good predictions. During training, we log some data so we can generate graphs that help us understand how well the model is learning. Once training is done, we extract the model parameters and convert them into C-style arrays so we can copy and paste them into an Arduino sketch later. We simply print them out in the terminal. After that, we use Python's matplotlib library to plot graphs that visualize what we logged during the training process. All right, let's fire up the program and see how it works out. Just a heads up, importing the massive TensorFlow library can take about 15 seconds. Or better yet, let's jump ahead using my trusty time machine. Boom, we're there. The training is running. A batch of 100 epochs takes just 1 to 2 seconds on an Intel Core i7. After 1,000 epochs, or 16 seconds, the training wraps up, and we get all our plots to dig into the results. Let's see. The loss graph starts around 0.7 and drops nicely over time with a little plateaus in between, then it picks back up and continues downward, ending around 0.02. In simple terms, loss tells us how wrong the model's predictions are. Lower is better. A steady decline means the model is learning effectively. The gradient flow shows how the model updates its weights from one epoch to the next. High values mean big corrections. Spikes here especially around Epoch 500, suggests the model was making strong adjustments there. 
These values settle down as training progresses and smooth out toward the end, which is exactly what we want. It shows the training is stable and not chaotic. If we compare the training data and the predictions, we can see the model is mostly nailing it. There are some tiny mismatches in the last column, but overall it's doing what we want, predicting the binary representation of the input values. All right, now I want to run this model on an Arduino. Here's the setup, a trim pot connected to the first analog pin and three PWM outputs driving three LEDs. So I'm going to copy the C-style arrays we got from the Python script and paste them into an Arduino sketch. Just below, the activation functions are defined. We're using Tay and H for the hidden layer and Sigmoid for the output layer. In the loop function, we read the analog value and normalize it to a range between 0 and 1. Then we calculate the weighted sums for the hidden layer using the weights and biases and pass the result through the activation function. We do the same for the output neurons. Finally, we scale their values to a range of 0 to 255 and send them to the three PWM pins to control the LEDs. Oof, that was tough. Now I need a quick break before I try this on a real Arduino. And while we are pausing, it's a perfect time to chat about my sponsor, PCBWay. Instead of assembling your circuits on messy breadboards, simply send them your Gerber files directly from KiCad via their plugin Specify your requirements and a few days later, the bots will arrive. I love the high quality PCBs and that's why I love to work with PCBWay. Soldering is always fun and done in no time, even for beginners. And PCBWay not only makes PCBs, they do also offer CNC machining, sheet metal works, 3D printing and injection molding. Get everything you need for your awesome projects from one hand, so give them a try. Now back to the topic. Okay, let's see. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Hmm, I was expecting it to behave like an ADC and output between zeros and ones. Just like in the training data. But instead, it looks kind of analog. Well spotted. The network doesn't just jump between numbers. It smoothly interpolates between them. This happens because we didn't train the network on intermediate values like 1.5 or 4.5. It learned that a fully lit red LED represents a 4, and a red plus green LED combo represents a 5. So when it sees an input value between 4 and 5, it infers that this should be shown with a fully lit red and a partially lit green LED. Clever, isn't it? And that's the magic of neural networks. Even in their simplest form, they can generalize. They make educated guesses about values they haven't seen, based on the ones they have. All right, let's try another example. This time, I have a network with two hidden layers with six ReLU neurons, and an output layer with eight neurons using sigmoid. And here's the model description for TensorFlow. Let's start the training now. After 5,000 epochs, both the loss and gradient flow have stabilized at very low levels. The prediction heat map clearly shows that the model has learned its task. As the input increases, more LEDs light up. Below that, I've displayed the weight heat maps for each layer. Each column here represents the input weights for one of the eight neurons. Columns with very small weight values suggest those neurons aren't doing much. So let's cut out those lazy guys and see if the network still performs well. Hmm? That didn't go so well. Looks like the network lost too much learning capacity after we removed those neurons. Time to roll back a bit, or maybe try a smarter activation function to help it recover. So let's swap in leaky real U instead of the standard real U and see what happens. While regular real U outputs zero for any negative input, leaky real U allows a small negative slope. That way, neurons don't get stuck inactive and we might get back some of the lost learning ability. And with only six leaky ReLU neurons, we get steadily descending loss and gradient curves, accurate predictions, and well-balanced weights with no dead neurons, which shows us that this network is perfectly suited for its task. It's surprising how far we can shrink a network while keeping solid performance, only by choosing the right activation functions. Awesome. I can't wait to try this out on the Arduino. 
I've already hooked up some LEDs. So now let's write the leaky relu function and add the second hidden layer to the Arduino program. Hold on a second, there's a better way. Frameworks built for microcontrollers. One of the most popular is LightRT, formerly known as TensorFlow Lite. It's designed for ARM Cortex-M or ESP32 platforms, but unfortunately it doesn't run on tiny 8-bit MCUs like the Arduino Nano. But there is an alternative, AIFS, developed by the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. It supports pretty much any platform you can think of, from AVR-based Arduinos all the way up to PCs. AIFS is great for super lightweight tasks like gesture recognition or pattern detection in sensor data. And it's easy to use. This is the same model as before, now translated into C for use with AIFS. Honestly, it doesn't exactly look easy to use at first glance, does it? But fortunately, AIFS provides an easy-to-use converter tool that generates this C code as header files, even though putting function definitions in header files isn't considered good programming style. And this is how the AIFS converter is used. Depending on your Python framework, you import either the Keras to AIFS or PyTorch to AIFS module. To generate the C header files, you call one of the convert to FNN functions. For the Arduino, this is convert to FNNQ7, which takes the trained float model and converts it to quantized 8-bit values. Quantization means converting high-precision numbers, like 32-bit floats, into lower-precision ones, like 8-bit integers. This shrinks the model size and makes it run faster, ideal for tiny microcontrollers. The second parameter of the convert to FNN functions is the relative path to the directory where the header files will be generated. Inside that directory, you'll find two files. One contains the quantized model parameters, stored in 16-bit integers. Even though the values are 8-bit, they are stored side-by-side -side in 16-bit format. This aligns with the word structure of the Arduino's program memory, allowing the MCU to fetch two bytes at a time, so the model runs faster. The other file contains two function definitions. One initializes the model, using the parameters from the array, and the other performs the output calculation, also known as inference. All we need to do is to install the AIFS Arduino library using the library manager, then include the header file I mentioned earlier, call the model initialization function without parameters in the sketch setup, and then use the inference function inside the loop. This function takes two parameters, the address of the normalized analog input value and a reference to the output values array. Its values then just need to be written to the LEDs in a for loop, and just like that, the neural network is up and running on an Arduino. It makes perfect sense to use this network for a VU meter. For that, the input values in the training data should be arranged exponentially so that each LED represents a 3 decibel increase in signal level. So we get a logarithmic scale, which more accurately reflects how we perceive the loudness of an audio signal. Okay, Eric. Thank you for your great work. And thank you all for watching. If you'd like to try this yourself, the source code and detailed instructions are linked down below in the description. Help the algorithm by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos. See you next time. Feel like taking over